everyone, welcome to October's Virtual Kids Craft Corner. Today, we are going to talk about the history of Halloween and why we wear masks and costumes on this holiday. After the lesson, we will make our very own COVID-friendly Halloween masks. Let's get started. Today, Halloween is a holiday that mixes spooky with fun. Here in the United States, it's estimated that Americans spend $6 billion every year on Halloween. But did you know that Halloween is not a recent holiday? It is actually over 2,000 years old and was first celebrated by the Celts who lived in Northern France, Ireland, and the United Kingdom. They celebrated on October 31st, just like we do, but they didn't call the holiday Halloween. Instead, it was called Samhain. The Celts believed that on this night, the ghosts of the dead returned to Earth. During the Samhain celebrations, the Celts would try to tell each other's fortunes and would wear costumes, which were usually made up of animal heads and skins. As colonies began to form here in the United States, beliefs and customs were brought over by settlers from different European countries and an American version of Halloween was formed. The first celebrations were held to celebrate the fall harvest in which neighbors would tell each other's fortunes like the Celts did, as well as dance, sing, and tell stories about the dead. While annual autumn festivals were common by the 19th century, Halloween was yet to be celebrated everywhere in the United States. But by the second half of the 19th century, Halloween was becoming more popular all over the country as more and more immigrants were coming to America. At first, Halloween was largely about ghosts, witchcraft, and pulling pranks on people. But in the late 19th century, people began to turn Halloween into a holiday more about community get-togethers. So at the turn of the 20th century, the most common way to celebrate Halloween was to have Halloween parties for both kids and adults. These parties focused on games, seasonal foods, and costumes, a tradition that continues today. Since the beginning of Halloween, masks as well as costumes played an important part in celebrating the holiday. The Celts believed that the masks and costumes they wore during Samhain would trick spirits, keep them from knowing people's identities, and scare away evil spirits. In Renaissance Italy, it was popular to wear masks at masquerade balls. However, the goal wasn't to scare away evil spirits. Instead, the goal was to keep the identity of the mask wearer, usually an upper class citizen, a secret so they could take part in activities that were usually frowned upon in society. These masks worn at masquerades were beautifully decorated with jewels and gold. Here in America in the early 20th century, the masks and costumes worn by Halloween revelers were mostly homemade, as the only commercial costumes available were for children, and they were simple paper masks and aprons. These costumes were inspired by spooky themes like witches, ghosts, and black cats, with the goal being to conceal the wearer's identity. Just like in the 19th century, some young people in the 20th century liked to cause trouble on Halloween by pulling pranks. To prevent this, adults in the 1930s once again started organizing activities like haunted houses, trick-or-treating, and costume parties. This began a trend of pop culture costume themes because it became more about what the kids were interested in. So there became more character costumes from movies, comics, and radio shows. Department stores even started to sell box costume sets that were geared toward children. However, a lot of people continued to make their own as the sets that sold in stores were considered expensive. And over time, costumes became less about hiding your identity and more about having fun and staying out of trouble but masks were still incorporated into costumes. By the 1950s, those department store costume sets were becoming more affordable, so more and more kids were using them to dress up as mummies, Batman, Frankenstein's monster, and more. In the 1970s, a new mask trend began, the presidential mask. This inspired many presidential costumes, and the most popular presidential mask was former President Richard Nixon's. In the 1970s and 1980s, horror movies were growing in popularity and so were the masks worn by the villains of those movies, especially Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees. They are now a Halloween staple. Also during this time, sci-fi costumes were becoming popular too, especially characters from Star Wars, such as Darth Vader and C-3PO. 
Today, Halloween masks and costumes are more popular than ever, and they are a mixture of spooky themes from the past mixed with pop culture themes like toys, movies, and TV shows. We still also see a combination of store-bought and homemade costumes. Now that we've learned about the history of Halloween and the masks and costumes associated with it, let's get started on our craft. Some suggested items to decorate your mask are fabric paint, fabric markers, gems, sequins, thread for stitching or embroidery, and anything else you can think of. All right, so now that we have gone over the suggested supplies, I'm going to go ahead and get started. For my mask, I have just a simple white mask and I'm going to use some fabric paint. So what I'm going to do is I actually used a pencil to draw a design of a spider web and some spiders. And I'm actually going to go ahead and curve it up like this just so it's a little easier to apply the fabric paint when I get going. Now you might have noticed I have this uh, blank piece of paper next to me. That is my test paper. I like to test my fabric paint on some paper before I start to uh, apply it to my project just to make sure it'll come out nice and even and there's no air bubbles. So I'm going to go ahead and test that out real quick. And I've used this so I gotta give, give it a little bit of a shake. Just do a nice test line. That seemed to be pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna get started. I'm actually gonna go from my left and move to the right so I don't uh, dip my hand into the fabric paint. If you choose to use fabric paint, it will stain if it gets on your clothes. So I would maybe just wear some protective covering while you're using it if you're worried about getting it on your clothes. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and go down my line. Need to flatten that a little bit more. And you might have to do this a bit if you have the masks that tend to fold up. Connect them. Spider was a bit bigger than I meant for him to be, but that is okay. Okay, so let's start in the middle. Just adjust this a little. Now I had gone ahead and drew my design beforehand with pencil just because my stuff doesn't always turn out as well when I freehand. So I just wanted a nice guide. And even then I still can mess up a smidge, but that's okay. So I got my lines and I'll just do my connect connectors. Clean that off a little bit. You might have to do that as you go through your project and that's okay.
So now I have my spider web. Gotta get my little spider that's coming off of it. Clean that off again just a little bit. trying to be careful I got some fabric paint on my fingers so I'm trying to make sure that it doesn't spread onto my mask and I'm on my last spider spiders on there I'm going to go ahead and close my fabric paint now you're going to want to let this dry at least 24 hours before you wear it just to make sure um, all the paint is dry if you've used paint I would also if you use like fabric markers I'd let those set for about 24 hours too just to make sure and so there you have a Halloween themed COVID friendly mask and we can't wait to see what you guys create yourselves i hope you have fun if you need some inspiration here are examples of masks made by some of the staff here at the rogers historical museum thank you for joining us today as we learned about the history of halloween and the masks and costumes we wear to celebrate it if you'd like to enter your mask into the Downtown Rogers Virtual Halloween Parade taking place on Friday, October 30th, post a selfie with your mask to Facebook or Instagram using the hashtag Museum Mask Parade 2020. Submissions are due by Wednesday, October 14th. We can't wait to see what you create. Bye! Bye.